So in these videos, we can talk about how to evaluate different resonance forms. In other words, how do we understand what the factors that make one resonance form more stable than another? And in previous videos, we talked about how we want to minimize charges as much as we possibly can. So a neutral resonance form is going to be preferable to a charged resonance form. And then we also wanted to make sure that we had full octets in each of the atoms of a resonance form. So one with where every atom has a full octet is going to be more stable than one without. Now in this third video, we're going to talk about the factors which stabilize negative charge. Because we're seeing a situation here, if you go through every atom here, you can notice that each atom has a full octet. And there's nothing we can do about the fact that this each atom has a negative charge on it. Sorry, I didn't draw the negative charge and the nitrogen there. So how do we understand the factors which make one resonance form more stable than another? Well, in this case, we're going to need to know whether it's better to have a negative charge on our oxygen or to have a negative charge on the nitrogen. And that'll tell us which of these two resonance forms would be a major contributor to the resonance hybrid. So what is going to be important for understanding how to stabilize negative charge? Well, between oxygen and nitrogen, remember there is this very important factor called electronegativity. And you can kind of think of it like greed for electrons. I usually do think of electrons as the currency of chemistry. And then electronegativity is kind of like the, the, the degree to which an atom draws electrons towards itself. And if you recall, if we compare the first row of the periodic table, these elements, fluorine, oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon, we've got these numbers here for electronegativity of about four for fluorine. And this is the most electronegative and that goes to 3.5 for oxygen, 3.4, 3.5, 3.0 for nitrogen, 2.5 for carbon. So this is the least. And what this is basically a measure of is its, its ability to stabilize negative charge and ability to draw negative charge towards it. So with a, sta with a negative charge of, or electronegativity of 3.5, okay, oxygen is better able to stabilize negative charge than nitrogen. So oxygen has electronegativity of 3.5. Nitrogen has electronegativity of 3.0. So the negative charge here is going to become more stable. And therefore, this resonance form where the negative charge is more stable is going to become more significant And the resonance form on the, on the right, where the negative charge is on the nitrogen, this is going to be less. Okay, so it's just really a matter of, as we go across the periodic table, so going across the periodic table, um, greater electronegativity equals greater charge stability. I should say negative charge stability. Okay, so let's look at a second example. Actually, let's not look at this example just yet. Let's look at the other example. Yeah. All right, so comparing these two resonance forms, we've got oxygen, Again, the same situation where we've got full octets on every atom. There's no getting around it. And we've got negative charges on, in this case, oxygen, a negative charge on carbon in this case. No, second, no getting around the fact that we've got a negative charge. So again, comparing our electronegativities, you know, oxygen has electronegativity of 3.4. Carbon has electronegativity of 2.5. Having a negative charge on oxygen, this is going to be more stable because oxygen is better able to stabilize negative charge, higher electronegativity. This is going to be less stable. So when we're thinking about a resonance hybrid, this is going to be a more, this is going to be a more significant contributor to our resonance hybrid, and this is going to be less significant. And it's the same rule that we talked about before as 
you go across the periodic table from, from left to right, uh, greater electronegativity and greater negative charge stability. Okay, so let's try something else. We change our, our axis of the periodic table instead of looking going across from left to right. Let's see what happens when we go up to down. So let's get with this situation here. We've got instead of oxygen and nitrogen or oxygen and carbon, we're comparing oxygen and sulfur. Okay, so we've got a resonance form on the left. And again, every atom here has a full octet. You can draw them all out, eight, eight, eight. Again, we, we just have this negative charge to deal with. How do we know whether to put the negative charge on sulfur or on oxygen? And here, if you remember where everything is in the periodic table, oxygen is actually one above sulfur, which is then above selenium, and then below it is tellurium. Um, God save you if you ever have to work with tellurium. So here is sulfur compared to oxygen, and what we need to know is what's going to be more stable, sulfur or oxygen. So sulfur is larger than oxygen and basically what is actually the the answer to this question is this is actually more stable we know this from looking at the factors which determine acidity so we can actually measure acidity and understand that this is actually going to be more stable and less stable now this is kind of intuitive right because we think that the electronegativity oxygen is like 3.4 and sulfur is 2.6 so shouldn't oxygen be more stable well, actually, as it turns out, sulfur has a different factor, which is important as we go down the periodic table. Sulfur is more, what we call, polarizable. So when we're going across the periodic table, all those, those atoms are, are relatively similar sizes. But as we go down the periodic table, comparing two atoms, comparing oxygen and sulfur, Sulfur is going to be considerably larger in its, its ionic radius than oxygen is. And I'm going to exaggerate things a little bit. So sulfur being larger, there is a greater volume, right? It's a larger ion. And that means that negative charge, that charge of minus 1, is going to be more spread out. And that kind of jives with what we were talking about before and that we uh, in the first video and that we want to minimize charges as much as possible. This is going to stabilize um, our situation. Spread negative charges more spread out and so there's smaller volume negative charge is more concentrated and like we said before, concentrated charge tends to be less stable than charge which has been able to spread out over a, a greater area. And so again, if you look into the factors which, which affect acidity, and there's a video on that as well, you see that these factors are identical. Factors that stabilize negative charge and factors which affect acidity are, are both in the same, uh, we're basically looking at the same phenomenon here. So the bottom line here is going down the periodic table atoms are better able to stabilize negative charge. So for example, if we had to compare oxygen, sulfur, selenium, and tellurium, then you'd prefer the, the negative charge would be most stable, I would think, on tellurium, then selenium, then sulfur, then oxygen last, because tellurium would be the largest most polarizable and therefore should be uh, the most stable anion. So those are two of the important factors which stabilize negative charge and resonance forms. And again, I, the, the, these factors are identical to factors which affect acidity. So I encourage you to look over that series of videos as well, because you learn this, you learn that as well. So in the next video, we'll talk about the factors which stabilize positive charge.